go. Can you hear me now, Laurel and Lori? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. And hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Let me see if they can hear me. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great to me. So I hope everybody inside the room can, too. Now, we're going to tell us where you're from, everybody. Where are you now? Thumbs up if you can hear and see okay. Hear and see. And if you can see the, uh, this is not for the speakers, but for um, uh, Martha and Doris and Eugenia, if you see the share class link at the top by the attendee list, feel free to click on that and invite your friends. <laughs> So I'm going to um, shut my video off so that you can just see Lori and uh, Lauren and Lori, and then I'm going to tell you who they are, but first we're going to talk a little bit about the class. But let me get my face out of here. Okie dokie. So welcome again to another class in the S a Second Life MOOC. Hi, Tom. Nice to see you. Hope you can hear. Thanks, Eugenia. Um, and this is our wonderful presenters collage, which is ever changing as more people send in their pictures wow. and their details. So we have lots and lots, mm -hmm. and lots of, isn't it great? Lots and lots of courses going on from now until, ooh, 38 Celsius, mother of heaven. <laughs> I hope you're having something cold to drink. Um, we have lots and lots of other presenters putting in their details, and we've got lots more things going on for the rest of the course till the end of April. You may notice in your class schedule that we have blocked out all of the 9th, 10th, 11th, and most of the 12th because the Virtual World Best Practices and Education Conference will be happening in World. And I will put up a short uh, video tutorial in the WizIQ class frame and in the Moodle so you can see what's going to be at the conference. And if you have an avatar and want to come to the conference, um, I can't recommend that conference enough. Now, let me move. I'm going to move over to your first slide, guys, and then I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about you, and then we'll turn it over to you. Hold on a second while I maneuver in my computer. So we have today Lauren Thurman and Lori Wido, known in Second Life as Laurel McCallan and Lori Galley. They're going to talk about how a K-12 district is using the OpenSim grid for teacher professional development, the first for virtual field trips and as a sandbox for project-based learning builds by students from the second to the 12th grade. Escambia County School District has been using Second Life for five years to provide professional development and global collaboration opportunities via Sleek Island, and that's Second Life educators of Escambia County. Now five islands are hosted on our virtual on their virtual student campus on the iTech grid. Immersive Technology of the Scandia County. I hope I hope I'm saying the name of the county correct correctly in OpenSim. And they're going to be telling you all about how they've been using professional development to plan to vision in teachers and partnering with them to develop and implement a curriculum-based plan for student projects. And I just wanted to add um, my experience when I first came to Second Life in 2009, which is probably later than you guys, and joined ISTE, um, I think I learned an awful lot from both of you, giving tours and lectures and just being um, so helpful when I got charge of the schedule for the ISTE socials and was terrified about what to do next. I could always come to you guys and ask for advice and see if you couldn't lead another, another event um, for us. So I'm very grateful to you, and I know everybody's going to enjoy very much um, your presentation. So take it away, guys. Hey, great. And Nancy, that's so kind of you, because I feel the same way about you. Um, ISD was just an awesome place where we all began um, working together and learning from one another, and we could I am each other and just help each other figure it out. And um, those were great times, and it continues to be great and yet there's so much evolving, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So let me tell you a little bit about um, our school district and our area. We're from Pensacola, Florida. That is way in the panhandle, almost Alabama. In fact, where I live, we can drive about four miles down the road, and we're in Alabama. Um, and so we are a K-12 district. 
we actually stretch pretty far up north in the county. It can sit, you can drive for an entire hour and still be in our school district. So we're wide, widespread. We have um, 47 schools, 31 elementary, nine middle, and seven high schools. So a large dis uh, district, 3,000 uh, teachers, and 40,000 students. And I haven't even done a check. You can hear me, correct? Hear you. I hear you. Great. <laughs> Okay, so um, Lori and I are instructional technology teachers on special assignment. We um, have been with the district, Lori has been here for I think eight years, this is maybe nine years, this is my seventh year in this department. And uh, we, our job is partnering with the uh, tech coordinators, there's a tech coordinator at every school, so we work with them on new technology initiatives going into their school, but we also have the opportunities to do professional development on new and innovative technologies. And so that's how we got involved in using Second Life. As we were looking at lots of different things, we attended an ISTE webinar uh, where Kathy Schrock was sharing how her school district was using Second Life and we instantly became interested and uh, made an account that night and we were off on our adventures. But they were just personal adventures when we were learning and professional learning with people at ISTE. So um, let me tell you a little bit about, I'm going to go on the next slide and tell you a little bit about our journey in our district with virtual environment. So we have Sleek Island right now. That is our professional development island. Opened that in 2009. And um, we'll tell you more about that in just a second. Um, Two years later, we opened Tech Island, which stands for Teens of Escambia County, and uh, that we worked with middle school and high school, actually it was high school students that we worked with there uh, in a closed environment. And we're going to share some of the projects, or pictures from some of the projects that were there. And then, because you had to be 13 years or older to be at Tech Island, we had elementary teachers that saw what was going on and really had a desire to work with students. And so we looked into Open STEM, and in a year ago, December, we opened up one island, the elementary island, so that students could begin working there with their teachers on projects. And last fall, we opened up a middle school, a high school, and a school in our district who wanted their own island. And so they are in our grid. And uh, we will, we are now working on a new professional development island in Open STEM. So we're going to talk a little bit different in, in a bit, the difference between Second Life and Open STEM and why we made that change. Uh, so we're, we're kind of in the, we're kind of in the crosswinds right now of doing, of working in both worlds. Okay, so Sleek Island. Um, and we were going to, if, we, if you would like to take a look at it at the end of the session, we're going to send a floral and if you wanted to log into Second Life and come take a look at it, we will meet you there and that would be great. Um, it was funded through a grant and uh, we, one of the things that our district wanted us to do was to have a closed, secure environment because um, lots of times, you know, people are looking for places just to build and to hang out and maybe to do things that are not educationally focused. And so we uh, you, we had a group, we created a group that you had to join, and the group was open and it was free. You could join, we had to go through the process of joining the group in Second Life, and then you could have access to the island. We wanted to collaborate with other educators, so we wanted to make it easy for them to come there. Um, so what kinds of things did we do? Um, in the beginning at Sleek Island, well, when we arranged it, we first built it and built the areas, we um, made lots of meeting spaces for small groups because at the time we were supporting technology learning groups in our district. Out at the school, we worked with a facilitator. The facilitator went back and worked with a small group at the school. And there was, uh, sometimes there were stipends available to meet and sometimes they were not. And so sometimes they met in the evening if they were uh, they had children they wanted to tuck into bed and not meet till 8 o'clock at night. This was a great way for them to meet. We were hoping that a lot of them would take advantage of them, some of this place. Some of them did, and um, and, and some did not. It just had depended whether it um, was their thing, you know, how that is. It's just you 
Um, either you love it or you're a little bit uncertain, but some groups did make use of it. So we um, decided, and I need, and Lori, thank you, is looking at the chat. I'm being bad not taking a look at all the chat here. No problem. And, thanks. And so we, um, we started to think that we could use it for some professional development and that we could meet there from, because we're such a large district, rather than teachers driving down to the southern part of the county where our headquarters are, our, our real life physical headquarters, that we could maybe offer some professional development in world and give professional development points for it. So we started, um, we looked at some of the topics that we wanted to cover and one of the topics was the web 2.0 tool and we chose a variety of them and some teachers that we knew that were using them well in their classroom and asked them to share and present we did it in um four four once a, once a week for four weeks so we would we would kind of limit these to a month long once a week meeting and then so there would be they got credit for meeting one hour at sleep when that educator would share what they were doing they chose and we did some things like glossary and voice thread and wordle and then there would be a second hour of follow-up where in moodle they would do um, much like what you're doing they would do um, an assignment they would write a plan maybe they would do the lesson with their students and do some um, sharing of how that worked out for them um, some other things that we did in these sessions, iPads were just coming out and they were just really um, the rage. Everybody's so interested in and we definitely had a need for professional development. And so we did a four-week series called I Teach with iPod and iPad. Chris O'Neill came. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Chris O'Neill, but he has um, done many different projects with school districts on the iDevices and we were so privileged that he came and worked, um, did part of the presenting during that particular um, event. And then we also did um, raising digital citizens because we had a need for talking about digital citizenship. Um, we had someone from Edmodo that came as a guest. So it was a great place for guests to come. Um, we just used all kinds of things that supported discussions of best practices of 21st century learning. Um, we also, two different years, had a virtual, uh, uh, we have something called ITTS, it's Innovative Teaching and Technology Summit. It's sponsored by our county for our teachers. So we did a virtual one at the same time, and we're privileged to have some uh, several different people from around the country come and share via Sleek Island. So that was a great exposure for teachers that hadn't use this environment before um, to enjoy something uh, in their own time on a Saturday from their home. So here's a little snapshot of Tech Island. That was the teens of Escambia County Island that we had opened for two years. Uh, when we were at Tech Island, one of the things that requirements of Second Life to have students that are under the age of 16 here is that you have to have a closed environment and their avatars need to be made in such a way that they cannot teleport off the island. They cannot have IMs or friends uh, with adults that are off the island. And so we, we had to hire a third party um, that, would, that developed or something called a registration API that was a web page that was connected to the island where we could create the avatars with those limitations. And so the students were able to be in a safe environment and the teachers could come there if they were working on a project by a group membership, but excuse me, they could leave the island and go out and get some of the supplies and the things that students would need for their project. And we'll share some of those projects in a little bit we had that island, um, it was funded by for two years, and um, then our teams are now, as part of the move to open sim, where we wanted to have an elementary place, um, we also have, we have a high school, middle school and high school island over there, so we, we let Tech Island um, quietly go away a year ago. Um, and we're gonna share some of those projects in just a little bit from there. 
So at Tech Island, we we actually have four. We have we have six islands. One of them is somewhat in, inactive right now, but we have five, definitely five active islands going on in iTech. It is, um, as we said, in open sim. It is closed and limited access student islands. We hope to soon have iTech PD there, our professional development island, be open to hypergrid so that we can have visitors come to our professional development island and that we can collaborate with them much as we do at Sink Island and Second Life and then have the student islands closed um, and then maybe open on certain nights when we would have a showcase night perhaps. So we'll be sharing more about iTech in just a second. Give you some pictures of what's going on there. So why did we get involved in virtual world? Well, we were fascinated with it when we first um, were in at the Iski Island and participating in professional development there. There was a power that we saw in being able to collaborate and to discuss and attend sessions from home at night. Um, this was when we first were doing this back in 2009. That was before we were involved in Facebook, before we were involved in Google Hangout. Um, so this was just um, a, a very unique place where we could uh, come to events and to collaborate with people. Um, it really supported our community, supported our global collaboration, such as we're seeing now using this tool that there are people from other parts of the world that we're having discussion with and it couldn't take place um, without these types of environments. Uh, we loved that it had a life-like presence. You know, initially when we made our avatar, we had so much fun with them and we <laughs> visited so many places and it was unique. But after a while, we got past the avatar and pretty soon the avatar was just the eyes that we could see um, see into the world. And, and, and we really but also liked like the fact that we could manipulate and create objects, walk around them in that 3D environment. Um, for students, we love that it gives them this experiential learning um, and that participatory culture where all students, we see a different behavior, those ones that are quiet in the classroom and not participating, that does not occur when they're in virtual environment. Everybody um, is on a level playing field. Um, we love that we can see students, um, their curiosity, their desire to learn, uh, and they can demonstrate what they are learning through authentic tasks uh, that, and, and through the projects that they're doing, they're using their higher or, order. Your mic's cutting out a little bit, Lauren. Do you want to pick it up, Lori, while oh, yes. you're working on it? Oh, yes. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you're, you're coming okay. through loud and clear. Um, she was finishing up her thought about the higher order thinking skills um, that this provides when we do these kind of projects. And, and then also the fact that there are a lot of things you can do inside of a virtual environment um, that you just can't do in real life. It's uh, not possible. So um, it gives a lot of opportunities for the students. She looks to be frozen, I think.
Yeah, she does look frozen. Did you change the I did line? change it. Lord? I did change it. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we talked about why Second Life. Um, Lauren, if you come back on, let me know. Um, I don't know if you can hear us. Do you hear us? I see you Am now. I Am I back? I, I think you're back. You can hear? I'm so sorry. I had a little spinning wheel of death going on. <laughs> okay. I did want to... What before it well before we go on real quick I wanted to give them a link and maybe I can uh, type it into chat. I don't know how many of you have heard of Biome for Kids. Um, dot blogspot. Dot com. Um, we were talking about things that are not possible in real life that our students can do, and this is a great example of a virtual environment that has been created by someone where student um, by an educator. Chloe Greenwood, her name in real life is Carolyn Lowe, and she's with the Vibe Project, Virtual Environments for Bet Virtual, um, I can't remember right now. And they, she, you can apply for an account, and students, yes, elementary students, can create a little furry avatar and go there, and it is a science world, so they have all the different biomes that they can go and visit. And um, I was so excited when I saw that and hoping that our, that's something that our students could go to sometime. It's a great, safe environment. So why did we choose Second Life? Well, we initially got into it as we talked so much about ISTE and then VISTE, NOAA, um, one of our own co community colleges here in Florida that has done so much work in Second Life. And there are many others, but it was the power of the educational organization and meeting with other educators virtually from our offices and from our from our own living rooms um, and and attending conferences when if he would stream some of the sessions from their conference in world so that's how we first why we chose second life to begin with um, and so why are we going why have we decided that we are Interested, I'm going to get the next slide here. Interested in open STEM. It was initially because uh, we had elementary teachers that wanted to bring their students into the virtual environment. And in Second Life, you had to be 13 years old or older in a closed environment. And although nobody would know if we had younger children there, we knew we needed to model uh, best, best choices, best digital citizenship following the contract that you've signed when you use a software. And so we looked into OpenSIM, started with that elementary, and um, have moved on and has fi have found that from when, when we initially went to Reaction Grid in OpenSIM years ago, that each year it has become more and more stable. There are more and more educators and doing lots of sharing. Um, lots of free things in OpenSIM. We don't have to pay to upload images which is great with students because as we did projects, we had to give them lindens every time they uploaded an image to create something. Um, we are using a company called Dreamland Metaverse for our hosting provider. Uh, the price is about half the price of what we spent in Second Life. Uh, and so we're able to get more and um, hope to continue to grow. So I'm gonna, um, Lori's gonna share with you a little bit about um, what we've been, what we're working on in OpenSIM. So, um, Lauren, I think she's already mentioned one of the things that we're doing, um, and we're kind of in, still transferring some things over. But we are um, working on our iTech professional development sim. Um, we're going to end up. Closing down sleek, it will go away, which we can be a little sad, but yet we're, we're anxious and excited to go ahead and get started with Biotech. And we're also very excited that we were able to um, create and are working on creating iTech to be a lot like sleek. I mean, there will there will be um, some changes. There will be a few things that won't be exactly the same, but um, we found we were able to um, 
export and save a raw, that's capital R-A-W, raw file from our sleek um, island. And then we were able to import that into iTech. That allowed the island to, um, to look identical so we don't have to go in and do um, any terraforming and that kind of thing. So everything was kind of set up as far as the land. Um, so that worked out really well. And then also um, Lauren and I both, um, we had some things that we built on um, Sleek Island that we were also able to import into um, into iTech. So we, those things didn't go away. That was a that was a cool thing. I, you know, I had built the pier, and she built um, the band shell area and the swamp area. We have lots of, of of key locations on the island that we were excited to be able to um, make that shift and keep those things there. And I think our teachers were appreciative of that too, because they were a little sad to see Sleek go away. But once they saw that it was going to look almost just like you know what we had, I think they were fine with it. Um, so what we're doing there, um, you know, we have created a course. Um, called Teaching and Learning in Virtual Environments. Um, we initially, when we started this project, we, we tried to figure out how could we share this with our teachers and get them to, um, to buy into this and, and what could we do to, to get them to come in and, and, um, and learn about this environment. And so um, four times a year, typically, sometimes, I mean, we may do one in between here and there, but for the most part, um, every season we revisit having our course open um, fall, winter, spring, and summer. And um, we, ha we open and e we send out an email to all the teachers district-wide and invite them to come in, those that are excited to come in and learn. Some of them aren't exactly sure what they're learning about when they come in, but they, um, we've had a lot of, a lot of teachers interested. Um, it's not usually a humongous group, but we have uh, we have worked with a small teachers, probably a groups of maybe 10 to 15 at a time. Um, you know, they've been smaller here and there, depending on the time of year, what is going on in our district, that kind of thing. But um, but we um, we open this up for the teachers, and they come in um, and they learn about how they can use projects with their students um, and. One of the things that we feel like is important is to uh, model for them what the students would be learning if the students were to create some projects. We have a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, one of the ways that we found out seemed to work the best is that we would meet on um, the first day for about six hours. Um, we would meet for about six hours on that first meeting day, and we, uh, we were able to get our professional development department to, um, you know, kind of um, work with us on doing that. And um, that way we have that face-to-face -face interaction if there's ever any kind of technical issues and that kind of thing. And then the teacher leaves feeling very comfortable um, with the environment or comfortable enough that um, for the next three days um, we meet for two hours virtually. And some of the things that they learn are making objects, um, adding textures and colors to objects, um, creating media on a prim, which recently we have changed our viewer. We went from imprudence to singularity so that, um, so that they're able to put web on a prim. Um, we share those kinds of things with the teachers and then, um, also, we take them on a lot of tours to show them what all is out there in open STEM. There are a lot of educators, like Lauren said, who are doing some really great things. And we take them out to, to give them ideas. And I also let them get those freebies and bring it back so that they can get started on their own projects. Um, they usually get about 12 points of in-service credits when they come to this course. So it ends up being about 12 hours. Also, um, when they complete the course, one of the things that we felt like was very important is to provide ongoing support afterwards. So we have a learning community that meets once a month um, on iTech, and we share tips and tricks and things that they can do that we maybe we didn't go over during the course time. 
And um, the course, we kind of used a model uh, by Diane Lewis in Seminole County where she um, developed a way um, for most of the students to learn the basic skills. If they created a rug, a table, and a lamp, that kind of just provides all of the basic skills that they would need to know to um, do their own creation. So we, we go by that model and we have um, each one of the teachers do the very same thing. We have them create a, um, a rug, table, and lamp. And then in turn, whenever they bring their students in, um, we have the students start the same basic learning skills. Um, the other thing that we do, we have a project planning form that we share with um, with our teachers. And this form basically allows us to, to understand or know what kind of resources they're going to need for their project. Um, it helps the teacher know or how to organize, know what to do as far as organizing their project and making sure that they have the the elements that would be, you know, beneficial for a project, like their curriculum standards, of course, and make it inquiry-based, um, identify some essential questions, those kinds of elements are on this form. And um, once they had submitted that, Lauren and I make an appointment, usually with their technology coordinator um, at their school. Is it not working? Can you guys hear me? Everybody's hearing me okay, I hope. Okay, um, you know, we make an appointment with the technology coordinator and the principal and the teacher, and then um, we basically go in and sit down and just kind of discuss what kinds of things we're going to need um, to do to make this project work. Um, and, you know, we've, we've worked with all kinds of different situations. We've worked with um, netbooks on a netbook cart. We've worked with... Um, computer labs and, you know, of course, times of year where there's testing, we've worked around that, but we've, we've overcome a lot of things and we've done a lot of, of the, the teachers have um, really come up with some really cool projects. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the projects. I'm going to turn the mic back over to Lauren, I think, if she is able to, are you able to talk? I am here. Okay, okay. I don't know for how long. I, I was know, gonna turn I don't know back what's going to turn it back over to you then. <laughs> I'm wondering if we should be hardwired. I'm thinking about hardwiring my own, but I don't want to touch anything because it might break, right? <laughs> so let me catch up. You talked about the learning community? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I missed. I Sorry, missed I didn't even change my slides, did I? Let's look at them real quick. Um, yeah. Sorry, they're, guys. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, and, and you probably talked about the, the class up above, um, our, our classroom where they get to do some building. Um, and by the end of the course, it's just really full of all kinds of prims and scripts and all kinds of things going on. Um, but there's some great pictures here of both in real life and in the virtual environment. And then here's some from the learning community. In fact, we have a learning community tomorrow meeting tomorrow and I look forward to um, to being with some people. We're going to go take a look at one of the islands together. We're going on little tours mm -hmm. and get ideas and we're going to go take a look at the um, Native American projects that are taking place in one of the islands. And here was a picture of the of the project planning form. It's kind of a starting place for that discussion. So um, one of the project, the first project that we did at Tech Island, that is the island in Second Life, was with a high school class, science class, and they did a project every year called the Museum of Solid Waste. And several years ago, they, the teacher thought she was really forward to thinking when they did their project using PowerPoint. And then later on, before the PowerPoint, actually, they used to do it in the trifold boards where they did the pictures and type the text using their technology and, and then they did the PowerPoints and she said, I am ready to, um, I think, go with my students into the virtual environment. So they did it in 3D. It was a project that had eight different stations of, uh, it was about recycling the many different types of solid, the glass and the paper and the, all the different um, processes that we go through when we reuse our, our materials. And so, 
Uh, we went through all the process of helping them get started building, and we met with them every day. We went to the lab and helped them during their period, 15-minute periods every day. And so you had to get in there and get right at it right away and help them. After a while, we really noticed that they were helping each other. And um, they would ask us for some supplies, some things. They'd make a list and say, tomorrow I need this. But they would, um, they were helping each other within their groups. In fact, groups were helping. Someone would say, how do you do this or how do you do that? And somebody had figured it out and they were sharing amongst themselves. Um, so here's some of the different stations. At the last day, part of their, um, part of what they did was they did, went around and give it, gave a tour and did presenting at all the different stations. Because although they were on a team and they researched and learned about their one particular topic, uh, they were responsible on their assessment for all the information. These were some of the stations. Station one was introduction to solid waste. Station two, source reduction. Station three, uh, recycling. Uh, introduction to recycling. Four was about plastics. Five, metal. Six, paper and glass. Um, seven was waste to energy. And eight was land filling. And on the bottom right hand corner, you can see this was station seven which was waste to energy. And this group in particular, this girl was here at night a lot. We would find her working on her homework. She was um, building this incinerator and showing where things went in. She had little note cards. All the research was in note cards within the objects you could click and learn and um, figure out, you know, the research that they had put into this particular area. Um, they could have gone on for a long time, and their teacher every day would have to, you know, re every day they got a grade for what they did. She would give them a task that they had to do, whether they dropped it on the avatar, a note card on the avatar, whether they completed one particular project. They, um, they, you know, every day they had, she had to keep them rolling because students could spend, just like we can, can spend infinite amount of time in here creating. Yes, I remember Haley, too. She did a project um, called My Michigan, which was an awesome project. I enjoyed She really inspired us. OK, so I think I'm going to the next point here. And the next project at Tech Island was with a Spanish uh, class. This was a first-year Spanish class. And the teacher felt like she spent so much time uh, teaching them the nouns and the verbs and the things they needed to know that they didn't get to know about the culture at all. So she took a little break in the spring, and she identified seven different uh, Spanish-speaking countries and assigned them specific things, um, had a good checklist, just as the other class did, had a rubric had things that had to be included that they and they knew what their end product needed to have. And they worked on and included information on these various countries that they researched. Um, okay. I just had one slide on them, I think. And again, these were high school students. Um, some of them all the way freshmen, depending all the way up to seniors, depending on um, who wanted to take first year Spanish. So they were a great group to work with also. We basically would get in there and spend two to maybe three weeks this class. We would hit and miss that come um, over a six-week period. Probably we went once a week and worked with them. So um, it, for us, it was a great experience. They enjoyed it too. OK. So I think Lori's, uh, let me share a little bit about iTech Elementary, and then Lori's going to share a couple of the projects that took place here. This was our first island in Open STEM because we had a passionate uh, a friend who we knew was with us in Second Life in our district, but she really wanted, she was the first teacher actually in our district that got it and wanted her kids to have this experience. And uh, she's a media specialist, and she could work with teachers in many different grades on a curriculum-based project, but she didn't have a place because her kids were definitely not 13. They were younger. And so finally, we were able to secure an island in iTech. Um, we have, we kind of designed it in the middle. You, we have forts in Pensacola, a lot of history here, the Naval Air Museum and um, forts from way back during the, um, the Civil War time. 
and so we kind of built our for our area um, in the middle that the tree is on. Down underneath there, when you go inside, it's very much like uh, Fort Bragg Casino. And all of the uh, resources we have there, shopping and learning how to do things, they go inside those doors underneath there and get their resources. So Lori's going to share with you about that first project with, um, they were called BAD, the Virtual Architectural Designers. Um, and so as, um, as Lauren was talking about, um, this was one of our very innovative um, media specialists in our school district at, at an elementary school. And she um, she was our number one fan over at Sleek. We would, when we built Sleek, we would come in and find her sitting on a bench, and she just couldn't wait to see what we were going to do that day. <laughs> <laughs> so she was she was awesome, and she just knew that she wanted to do this with her kids one day. So um, she applied for a grant, and it was called the Laura Bush Foundation for America's Libraries, I believe. And um, in this grant, she received a set of books. They were all countries. And um, she wanted the students to – she wanted to be able to use those books by having the students read and um, – um, read one of the books. They were able to select their country. And um, then after they read the book, they would do some other types of research. And then they came into um, um, iTech. Uh, Lauren and I created some childlike avatars of which quickly changed to um, animals like foxes and dogs and whatnot. But they loved, loved, loved um, you know, changing their avatars, that was part of the fun. So we gave them um, the opportunity to do that at the very beginning. Um, the students were partnered in groups of two to three. And um, one of the things that they were to do was to find information about the land, what kind of, of land um, in this country, what kind of architectural structures were there, um, what kind of people or daily life plants and animals, anything that was interesting, the foods that, that they ate, um, all those kinds of things were what the students were um, responsible for finding and putting that vital information into their project, whether it was with a note card, putting that into a prim, they um, built their structures, um, and they learned a lot of, of ways to do that. Um, they, they really did some incredible work, these kids. Um, this was an after-school club where the students basically, throughout the day, if they had some extra time, maybe they caught up on some work. Their teachers were very supportive to let them come in and do some of their work um, during during school time. But for the most part, they met after school, the after-school club, and um, hence the name of it, Virtual Architectural Designers, was the name of the club. And um, Anyway, it was a lot of fun for them to create their little identities. Uh, we gave them, like I said, time to do that. And then when the project was complete and they had certain amounts of scripting that they put in each of their objects, they had to put textures, they had to put note cards in their objects. Um, everything, once it was complete, um, the, the student was able to go to something called the, the ITTS that, that Lauren talked about previously, which is a digital showcase. And the students were able to share with their parents. They were able to share with other students. They were able to share with administrators. And um, it, was, it was just awesome. They were so excited to share what they did um, for that project. Last year, we had about 12 participants. This year, we have about 15, and their project is about to start probably in about a week. Um, they are going to be doing, based on um, our state assessment scores, something that, that a lot of the students had some, some difficulty with, um, they decided to create an environment on um, the Earth's major systems. And so they have broken up into three different groups. And they're going to create water cycle, weather, and erosion and pollution. They're going to create that entire environment and show how that all kind of works together or against each other. And then they're going to um, to build that model. And that's not going to be starting probably for a couple of days. But that's what they'll be doing this year. 
I think that fit for the virtual bad. Oh, here's another picture. I'm forgetting to change. That's silly. Um, here's a picture of them as they were. They first came in um, and they went through an orientation area, with, which is how the students first learn some of their basic skills. And Lauren and I are with them um, to, to do a lot of that. Um, we kind of hold their hands as they walk through that process and are there for the teachers. And then, um, as you can see, the students are very engaged. Okay, did we lose Lauren again? I think we... We might have lost tissue, I think. Are you back, Lauren? She's coming back in. I think I saw her pop up there. She's going to talk to you about the virtual solar system at iTech. Um, really cool build. She wouldn't tell you this, but I'll tell you while she's not here. She did this incredible build um, of the solar system way up in the in the sky um, for the kids to be able to go and and check out the planets. There she is, and I will let her pick it up from here. I am so sorry. I'm crashing. And I have feedback. Okay. So th this, and I'm going to be quick because we're almost running out of time. This project um, was actually made as an example for teachers to um, be able to see what kind of things they might want to do. But also, we had um, a, a, cl a third grade class that every year they used to get to go, a teacher used to get to go to the planetarium at our local our junior college, but we, um, they weren't, thought not a problem, that's one of those not possible, not possible in real life, but we can make it possible in a virtual environment. So we did build the solar system, we three um, or nine, we did Pluto, we built nine um, large spheres way up in the air and we hollowed them out and put that texture inside and the sounds and all. And inside there were links. They could teleport from planet to planet. And you can see the little girl on the left. That my sound is not good. The little girl on the left, you can see that they are doing a scavenger hunt. Is that any better, the sound? And so thank you a little bit. And so um, that is still there, both as an example for teachers, but also for various students to use. As you can see, we made their avatars. Um, we made their avatars to be little aliens of different colors, and they had a blast and learned a lot. <laughs> so this is our middle school island, and briefly. Lori's going to share about a Sisopolis project that they did at that island. Um, Sisopolis is, um, again, another one of our, our very creative um, media specialists who the school this year, their theme was um, Dr. Seuss, and she wanted us to, I'm going to go back to the little, the big ball in the sky. Um, the students were able to, at the very bottom of that little tunnel looking thing, they were able to teleport up inside of that ball and they had, each one of them had a platform and she had them create their platform environment based on um, some place that they would like to be. Um, I'm, I'm, you probably all have heard of the book, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Um, she wanted them to to build their own place based on either a real life situation or um, they could also make it up. But if they either way, they had to have certain elements in their project. Whether they had to have a government system, you had to have lots of information about the people that would live there and what kinds of things you would see in that environment. So she had a lot of criteria. Um, even though, even if it was something that the children made up, and and it pretty much most of them were 
places that the children decided that they wanted to create versus some place that they um, they actually did a lot of research on, which was kind of neat because their little creative juices were just a flowing on this one. Um, this was also an after-school club. They met probably about eight weeks for two, two and a half hours um, on a specific day every week. And so um, they really enjoyed doing this. Again, they um, will share at the ITTS, the Digital Showcase here in our district. That all, that all is coming up in May. And they also did a gallery night where their parents were able to come and, and view their projects too. Okay, and then at iTech High School, there we did a project, same teacher as last year that it was at Tech. She did a project on biomes. Can you hear me? I'm getting lots of feedback from my own mic. Just want to make sure you can hear. Good. Okay. So they had a list, um, had a rubric, had things that needed to be uh, included in their bill. Well, pretty much on this island, we gave them that middle building that had resources, and we gave them a space, uh, that round disc that they could build on. Well, either they could be under the dome or they could choose things. They did some lots of different creative work. Within that, they had lots of very specific scientific things that needed to be included. Lori and I were amazed because this was an AP class, you know, AP environmental science, and it was um, a bit above our understanding level. They were advanced students. We had so much fun with them. They also worked after hours. We gave them access in the evening. We took turns being here to help them if they needed us. And um, they worked very hard. Inside of the dome, they have various, um, they have some presentation boards or note cards that are buried in objects giving information about the topic that they researched. Um, they all were very immersed. Again, very quickly this project went. They could not get enough time. Um, they helped one another, saw that it was just um, such an engaged group. And we heard from other people at the school that kids were so um, driven to want to get into this teacher's class because they knew that each year they were going to do a project at IPEC. We're hoping to do another one with them yet this year. Not sure um, how that's going to happen with end of course courses um, as with the testing takes up the technology rooms at certain times. So we have to work in between that with them. I think we had another slide here. This is inside some of the biome. As they did with the other model at the end of their projects, they all went around and toured and they are very serious, get very quiet and are listening and taking notes to all the different factors that they need to learn about the different biomes. Lori and I learned a lot. And this is ITEC Cordova Park. This is the elementary school that wanted to have their own island um, because eventually we're going to have to poop some things and um, make room for the new projects that are coming in and they didn't want that to happen. And so they have their own place that they can spend some time throughout the year working on. And this is a project that a fifth grade class is doing on various Native American tribes. And um, so we're, we're going there tomorrow night, the teachers, to hear about what they're creating. We're looking forward to that. So what are some of the things that we have learned? One thing we've learned is students, and I have to say teachers also, don't read the orientation boards that we put up. Um, they bust right into creating. They're so excited only after they've changed their avatars. We've learned that furries are very popular and that teachers want hair and they want heels. And uh, there is never easy time. <laughs> students don't want to fall off. Students remain in vacant seeing very little, almost no problems with being off task or discipline problems. They work together really well as long as it's well planned and focused and they're given rubrics and 
your given timeline as the organization is crucial. Um, we've noticed that even the shy ones that normally just check out and not be a part of the discussion, not be um, contributing to projects, that doesn't take place in the virtual world. Everyone contributes. Uh, and we have asked for pre and post assessments or some type of assessment, and we've been able to show that there is always an increased assess um, assessment achievement levels. And if you wanted to keep in touch with what we're doing, we do have a blog where we post uh, all kinds of things, post what our projects that our students are doing. I'm, I have to admit, a little bit behind that up to do there. Um, and we all kinds of resources that are open in Second Life because um, we, we want to share. As so many people have shared with us and helped us get started, we want to share where you can get um, free resources to use in iTech, where you can get all kinds of proof, uh, all, all kinds of extra um, research articles that help you get going. And so you might want to keep in touch with us at this uh, blog. And so wondering if you have any questions or um, something that maybe we didn't share that you might be wondering about. And we will watch the chat. We have, I have to say, this has been our passion. We have been um, really excited. Second Life versus Open Sim. Um, Second Life for the longest time. Oops, and I think I'm going to lose sound again. I might, if I lose sound, I'm going to come back. That's a little message coming up. Second Life was much more robust in the beginning. Open Sim has really caught up. Um, used to do a lot of crashing in Open Sim. Um, not so much now. We're paying less in open sim for more space than we did in Second Life. However, it doesn't support as many avatars at the same time. Um, so the price is different, but you get what you pay for. Um, we have found that there are more and more educators in Second Life that are sharing things, and, and we've been excited about that. Um, initially, we have them just do it from school where we can be supervised, but once we build a relationship with them, uh, with the high school students, we have given them access to be in after hours, but it was during a time when we could commit to be there in the evening. Some, um, we told them that we had chat loggers that we put out and that we talked about um, best practices in digital citizenship and that it was a campus and that anything that they did that to uh, best practices best choices would possibly um, result in us losing places and that we didn't want to lose them. So that we did not, the elementary students, we didn't have the, uh, in their um, after hours, just it never get to that point yet. About the learning curve, um, the students don't really have a lot of problems with the learning curve. I would say maybe some of our teachers um, have had more of a learning curve, but I think if they're passionate about it, it becomes easy, and we're all we all just laugh and help each other. Um, some people very quickly catch on and are often at teaching us things and sharing with us. I think the students enjoy um, teaching the teacher also. Um, they kind of learn together. And um, it, it just really makes it a very collaborative environment in the classroom as they're doing this. Yeah, I see. And, and we keep giving, doing this course again and again um, and hope for more to join. Um, 
you know, and sometimes we've got a good sized class. Last year we had so many during the summer that we had to offer a second class. Um, but and we have had teachers tell us that uh, you know I that gosh if more people knew about this you know they would love it they would want to do this and and, and we we kind of we send out those emails but you know how time goes when when you're busy in your classroom and you kind of you just don't have time to to come up above water sometimes and so um, it has to be really when it's a good time for that particular teacher we have some second grade teachers that are going to join us. Um, in the next few weeks that um, that will be very interesting because we've not worked with students that were that young in terms of building um, on our open sim but but we're gonna we're gonna give it a try and see how they do and uh, Alina Alina I would say that we've sometimes had resistance from some teachers too um, and we kind of just ignore that replace the ones that um, have really been passionate about it the, the blessing to us is that our administrator gets it, and that means everything. The person that funds it gets it and um, understands the power of it. So we're fortunate. The, the other thing that helps is that the teachers that come to us are the ones that are really, truly wanting to do this. We're not forcing anybody. This is something that you know, that they make that decision um, when it, like I said, when it's a good time for them and when they're ready to take on something like this. And, um, and, and you know, if you force, if you force it whenever it's just not a good time or they're not interested or what have you, then that's where you, you, you get the resistance. <laughs> Well, um, we've, we've hit the hour. If anybody else has any more questions, get them in soon, <laughs> like almost now. And if you guys want to put the uh, swirl, Martha's, oh, well, Martha's question was about the learning curve in, um, and I think Laura, Lauren talked about it a little bit, but was it specifically a difference in the learning curve? Between uh, open and spin? Actually, um, really right, just kind of level, just the same. A different viewer, but um, so we essentially chose a viewer that was very similar, and um, it, it's not been a big deal to go from one to the other. Yeah, okay. So, right, it's the same, Martha. Um, I see Doris typing. Let's hold on just a second and see if we have more questions coming in. And then if you guys can put the swirl in the. Uh, um, Get it in. Get it. Of course, that would be great. And Doris is also saying that she didn't encounter much difference between the two virtual worlds, just that um, the viewers right. are different. Very similar. I remember the first time I went in Reaction Grid, there was a couple of years ago, and oh boy, there wasn't it, much there. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on my Michigan. Yeah, and, and also, it, we crashed a lot, I rem if I remember right. Um, open Sim, we have not had that yeah. issue. We have, um, it's, it's been very, pretty much for the most part, very stable. Um, and even mm -hmm. um, with the amount of students that come to the grid, um, like Lauren was saying, there's a little bit of a difference in that it, it doesn't hold as many, but we could pay for having more, and it would still be um, really a lot less than Second Life. So it's still, it's still, um, you know, very reasonable for the amount of um, students that you can, um, you know, work with district wide too. You can't beat it. Yeah. Yeah, the money is a big problem. I mean, at the the Chilbo community where our headquarters is used to be chock a block with all kinds of teachers and libraries and all kinds of things. And um, over the last couple of years, we've all had financial circumstances that have had us all uh, limiting ourselves down to the things that really matter. Um, and or many of our community have moved over to Open Sim and to other mm -hmm. kinds of OS Grid. Um, and other virtual worlds entirely as well because of the cost 
um, and then they maintain a home in Second Life because it's more fun to party. In Second Life still, so it's easier to find so, people that's kind in of, Second Life. That's the only thing that's yeah. that's a little hard or difficult in Open Sim. It's it's just so spread out and hard to kind of jump around. We we're learning about that and and we're we're having a lot more success with it, with it now. Um, but I'm hoping that that will get even better in the next you know years. Well, I, I'd like to say um, thank you to you guys. This has been absolutely wonderful. And I and everything um, I think Nellie and, and Doris and I hope for, um, very inspiring. Um, and if you can put the slurl to sleep into the um, chat, that would be fantastic. And I know we also have a landmark on the poster board in the Second Life headquarters. And anyone who wants to come and meet them and see sleep, um, the soon-to-be evaporated, I guess, installation here in Second Life. Um, please join us in Second Life after after the class is over. But thank you, guys. It was absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Thanks for having us. We enjoyed it. You're welcome. <laughs> Minus the technical difficulties, I guess, for Lauren. <laughs> Bless her heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had I know. of you at one point, Lauren. I think we've lost her again. <laughs> She's gone back into freeze mode again. Yeah. Well, if you come into Second Life, um, I am me and I, uh, uh, Maggie Laramore, and I will um, ask one of you guys for a TP, and then we can start bringing people in that are asking That'd be for wonderful. TPs as well. So, so thank, Thank you very much, guys, and we'll see you in Second Life in a while. Let me copy the chat. Great. Tom's not around. And I'm going to close the course now. I can. Yes. Yay. Yes. Hi. Hey. It took a minute. Hi, Elena. Yay. Good. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. Ooh, cool. Hi, Lori. Hi, Elena. Hi, <laughs> Lorene. Hey everybody, whoops. Guess I should have put this out in a bigger area. This is nice. I'm I haven't been over here in a long time. Try to but not I knock anybody over. over. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is going to be bittersweet when it goes away. Um, I, that, which is part of the reason we say we're rebuilding yeah. the other one just like it um, for, so that people are comfortable. But yeah, I think it's exactly. us. <laughs> I think we're going to just, we, we oh. need it to be the same. Yeah. So, that, you know, <laughs> um, it, it was kind of, it was, so was kind of like when Isti, yeah. the big island, went away. And um, every once in a while I look that, at just like, we had emotional. Those, those, it's funny. That last so day, the last party to, we had for Isti. Yeah. And we had it all really those. Was. Um, PowerPoints of everybody's photos, and I they come up on my screensaver every once in a while. It's like, oh, <laughs> yes, yes, oh. yes, I know it. Okay, Lori's going to come back on another computer. Um, yeah, it those was. That, that was cool that everybody could add their pictures. That was. Um, just that, yeah. that was a special night. It's just amazing the relationships you make with people via a, a virtual environment. Um, you know, um, and back yeah. back when we first came in world, almost every mm -hmm. night you could go to, it was kind of like a concurrent session every night Thursday of the week. Because the, the, the den was yeah. here. Thursdays were lectures um, on and On Wednesday social. night, and Isti yeah. did speaker every Tuesday. That, that was a big part of my life for a while. I can't remember what. And, huh? and, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And Visti has continued. Yeah. That was was that was Visti has continued. Yeah. I admire them. Yeah. I think these kind of on. having um, you know difficulties. Awesome. But group. It, but they're they everyone's while they have bring something new wonderful. Visti Sigby. So. But of course. And we've got Scott and Spiff from Virtual Pioneers yeah. also get talking for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I saw that they were on the schedule. That's great. That is great. You know, and so many other things have come up. You know, the Minecraft. Our our district is. You know, we have teachers yeah. that are interested in Minecraft, and we're going to go there. Um, and I'm just wondering yeah. how it will affect. You know, one or the other. Um, I'm wondering how it will yeah. affect our, our virtual environments. But nonetheless, you know, technology um, and all is about change. <laughs> so. Have to be open um, Maggie, yeah. Maggie, uh, Lorraine, can can we oh, sure. come close to me? Can we come up over here? Can you yeah. move near me to take a photo, please? Yes, because I would like to have a, a group photo. You want us all look look in the same direction? Yeah, uh, it's mm, the same way as my avatar, please. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I don't know if Lori can I'm turn. I'm not sure if Lori is really there or if she's. Oops, yeah, she, she was having problems here. I hearing. think she's changing, uh, changing the computer. Well, yeah, but, but I can take the photo here. now. Well, that's oh, funny because she's, she, yeah. she's having the troubles now and you were having so many problems before. You never know what's going to work. Excellent. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Oh, I know oh. it. Oh gosh. And I tried my other computer and it said I had no it well, had no microphone Lori, and no video. Lori, can and you it's hear like, us? We're trying okay, to make a group. Um, photo. I just that was my backup. I don't way. know. Okay, is standing. You can turn around. Well, I hope they're helping my Spanish this, every time This I kind I of, oh God, of activities helps, helps my English. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, I will try, I will try. <laughs> in my lecture, in my lecture, you are going to write in Spanish. <laughs> Your English is better than my Spanish. I'm always impressed. <laughs> okay, don't worry. My English is not good. Good practice. There we go. Yeah. You know, yeah, really. That, I, that, now, not really about you, but I mean, you know, um, people Great that have story. more than one yeah. language. Um, awesome. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Big smile, please. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I like <Wow>. that. <laughs> that's better than Whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well, they do in Scotland. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Absolutely. That's that's right. Well, maybe they oh, go together well. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good combination too. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Sw Switzerland, it's beer and cheese. I got cheese, a couple of know? photos for the photo gallery. Oh, there you go. Yay! I can't move. That's what I was doing while I was. Yay! Yay. That's all I was doing while I was waiting for you guys was hey. putting <laughs> pictures up in the photo I'm gallery. I'm taking some. At the SL MOOC. It is, yeah. Thank God there's three of us. <laughs> this is this is awesome and, that you guys are Tom doing Hodgers this. Tom Hodgers is move. also it's a, a lot of work, isn't it? Uh, he's a kind of a volunteer facilitator. <laughs> so he's been doing a lot yes, of the yes, yes, a lot it's of work. Great, we're going to do uh, it next but year. Awesome. We're going to do it next April too. So magic carpet ride. Great. Okay. Great. 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 Um. Yeah, you want to go hop Excellent. on over? Let me. Um. I guess I think I need to sit first because the owner has to sit first. I think. Let me see. Let me sit. I think so. Do we have to sit on the carpet? Manalina. Oh, we have to. Oh. <laughs> Good for you, Alina. You may see your Facebook photos on the uh, on the wall in the headquarters. <laughs> yeah. Yay. This is exciting. Everybody's here. Okay. So remember. <laughs> Ready. Ready. Start. Does it start? 
<laughs> yeah, very funny. <laughs> Okay, this is start. wonderful. Yep, here we go. Okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, these are the orientation boards that um, most of our people don't read, and they're so very thorough. <laughs> but um, sometimes we send them back here um, and have it be part of the beginning class. Just a few things to get started so that they will come back here if they want. This was originally, after ISTE closed, oh, we made this as the place where you could um, put in a swirl and you could yeah. start your avatar for the very first time from this landing so that they weren't out and about somewhere. We didn't want them out, you know, originally they went to ISTE and then didn't realize that we could make one too, just by putting the swirl on your oh, yes. for where to go, so that was <laughs> I... great. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with this the opinionator here. I don't know if you've used it or not. Yeah, and and you know, I emailed the guy, this is how great educators are, I emailed and said, we would love to have this in open sim. And um, and he had not been back cool. in Second Life for several years, but he worked with me and someone else and we recreated in open sim and he said, share it with anybody. It yeah. was awesome. People have been great, you know, because the thing in OpenSim is nobody's really making money. They're not selling things so much. Uh, every once in a while you come upon an island where they're selling, but um, most everything is free. These are the remnants from that I teach with iPod and iPad. I love the and blue taxonomy. When you click on them, they give you lots of links. We use them from that night, so we just put them Neat. over, or from that course, so we just put them over here um, and click in. Yes, that was also a freebie <laughs> that um, an educator made, and you could just make a copy. I haven't been able to get that to take over yet. I'm, I'm a beggar. I keep asking. So I'm going to go down under the water here, and if we run into the pole, I apologize. Um, you can see, this is Lori's area, her passion she built here. There's an underwater meeting room. Here's one of those areas where there's um, seating for a small group, groups of eight we had. Um, in our in our technology learning groups. Oh, absolutely. We did a little bit of dancing here many times after the virtual conferences. <laughs> got, a, got a party a little bit in Second Life because your avatar avatar can move like my real person cannot. And and you know what? I think next year that teacher that every Ooh, year does nice. a project is gonna since she's science and she teaches um, marine biology also. I think she's gonna do an underwater project. So we're probably going to have to drop part of the oh, island the over dolphin. there and um, let them research and recreate it underground or underwater area. This is an um, cool. This is an area. Florida has a technology integration matrix that looks at the different areas, the level of technology that's being integrated in the classroom, and the different types. Um, whether it's authentic or whether it is um, constructivist or collaborative or you know trying to all get all of those toward the higher level of integration and so as you go around it gives you the description of those and we started and never finished posting projects that were being done within our district at those different levels so that during classes we could walk around them and say um this is what it looks Very like neat. um and and when we have time, we probably will recreate this and finish it over in open, open sim. This is an air, big old area we've used for lots of different things when Oi. you need a big wide open area. <laughs> um, of course, we live in an area where I there are wetlands <laughs> and bayous and alligators. So we had to have that alligator down here that you click on <laughs> and it eats your avatar. Um, we had that, yeah, yeah, had to have that for fun. So again, another small meeting area, and this is this nice. is a, a little bit of a larger meeting area where when we had the virtual conference and we had more than one session going on, this is one of the areas that we used. Um, also, leftovers from the Globster and the um, no, I can't remember what voice threads. We had fun with this one time. Um, the conceptualizer, have you ever used that? Where you could you could build a three D. Uh, graphic organizer. So you start with one little ball in the middle and you click on it and shoots out another one and then you can right click and um, and 
customize the hovering script so that you um, can say what those were. And this is just a model. Uh -huh. it makes you think this was during something when we were looking at building your professional learning network and what kind of things are you using for your in your network to keep learning and connecting. Um, got a little campfire area here where we met ah. with um, small groups. And then this is a cool thing that was shared with us by Diane Lewis from Seminole County. Um, and they, they are a county in Florida. And her builder made this. I'm trying to get him to build it for us. Um, and I would pay him lindens over in, in Open Sim. It is called a discussion oh. deck. And students sit around if you have like you know five different groups they sit in the different colored group with their group and then the teacher sits on the main pet uh the main podium and or the seat and she uh, will give them a question some things they need to discuss and then she shoots them up into the sky and they oh, are at cool. a different level and a different position so that their chat or their speech doesn't inter it can't be um doesn't carry to the other area and then the teacher, the teacher can click and go up and visit them to make sure wow. they're on task, maybe answer questions or join in the discussion. And then she comes on down and pulls them all back down again, and then they discuss as a class. So it was oh, just a pretty it, cool oh, tool. this is from Issy Island. Do you recognize this here, this um, treehouse? Oh. Lori, Lori, we, we were just at such a uh, loss when Isti went away that Lori recreated one just like it. Um, so oh. we could, Because this was our home when we did not have a home. We used to log on and log off at the, yeah. um, the treehouse oh, in Isti. And so when it went away, we just, um, she, she built one here so that we could still have our sweet memories. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know if we talked about the book studies that we have had here. We just completed one on gamification, and um, and we would meet every year. Wow. We do a book study. We're not able nice. to give them a stipend, but we find money to buy the book, so you get the book for free. And then we meet after school hours here, and they get in service points. And so we just finished one. Um, who was it that came to visit us, Lori, from VSD? We asked her to come. That is working with the mobile learning. Um, I'm so ashamed that I can't think of her name. Oh, neat. Um, but anyway, she oh, came Laura, as a sure. guest one time to talk because they are really doing some gaming in their county in Virginia. Uh, it will come to me. Laura Briggs. Laura Briggs. Laura Briggs. Laura Briggs came, so that was pretty cool. And lots of small group areas here <laughs> in the gar in the um, the garden area, <laughs> and um, even changing rooms over here for oh, yeah, exactly. that are shy. <laughs> And need to have a <laughs> private area to figure out their avatar. <laughs> you know how we were in the beginning, always um, lo losing things, you know? Oh, great. <laughs> and we asked permission from ISTE, and they let us post their standards here as long as when they clicked, it went to their web page. Huh. So um, we've tried to really um, keep things, you know, our teachers just are not even aware that there are ISTE standards. And, and for the t for the coordinators and for the That's coaches great. and the administrators. And so again and again, whenever no. it's possible. <laughs> the viewers might have a problem. I'm having a good standards. time. <laughs> um, and I hope I'm not making you motion sickness. You just flew through a tree. Um, and then inside the building here, um, we've got a lot of resources, a couple good sitting areas. We keep a calendar of, um, of it that's synchronized with that, the, um, the MOOC calendar. I'm going to fly through another tree to see if I can go in here. I don't know if I can. I maybe should try. And um, <laughs> it has links to the different groups that you we would recommend that you yeah. join, um, along with some pictures and things. So we're wow. thinking, I'm thinking over at OpenSim, we need to post lots of pictures of, um, because because how many years? We've been five years here, and um, we've, we've learned a lot. We've grown a lot. And we need to kind of have a, a wall of, um, of good times <laughs> posted there. Um, and then uh, way up in the sky, we've got a platform that is where we do our teaching and learning in virtual environments class. And it, it's pro I haven't been up there um, 
I'm going to say anything bad about you, Lori. <laughs> she must have had it been away AFK for, for a little bit. Um, We've got a big platform up there where we, we, over the course of time, they do their building and creating and figuring things out. And we always kind of leave it up oh, there because it's nice. a great big mess. And I just love it. It's like a, a messy classroom where things have been really positively productive. Um, and it's just a fun place to me to, re to see that um, because they laugh, when, when they never resent taking that class, um, you know, during summer or whatever, we don't have stipend money. They do it out of, out of passion. And, um, and that way we don't get to workshop junkies, get people that really want to learn. And we just can give them professional development points, some goodies and water. And, um, and so the first time we meet with them, Lori probably told you, we meet in Very person. Neat. And then all the other times it's virtual. And um, so I have lots of fun up there. Anyway, yeah, we're we yeah, we're trying to yeah we're trying to recreate at iTech exactly like this. So that's kind of at a glimpse. It, that's kind of what we um, just what we what we've had here. Oh, um, lovely. I guess we will make we will make Visti or Isti Island our home in Second Life after June, and and it's okay because. Um, we are spending, I tell you, we are spending more and more time in the other environment. Oops, uh. I spell it right. Um, once we started working with students, we had less and less time for the professional development because, um, because there's only so much time in a day. And really, our whole goal was yeah. for students to be in well, these Well, you're places. welcome to use this, the, um, the so, so that's okay, sort of building but we still try also, to get in some, because we'll, some PD things. We're going to leave that here. up with everything in it, um, and then next yeah. year, you know, refresh it with stuff from the new students. So that's available. Thank you. And anybody can put things in the Educational Resource Center also. That would be awesome. That yeah. would be awesome. We will definitely and, keep that and, in mind. Um, some of the early Chilbo community members, so we're always happy to have good stuff put in there. Cool, cool. Uh -huh. Fleep, Fleep has been really instrumental oh, in um, sharing of resources and. Yeah, and we're still um, trying. We're, for things we're trying to get her to sim. talk. She, she has yes, just really but posted we haven't managed things to get her into and made things yet. possible. So for, I'm yeah, she'll she's be been able great. To talk for the course. Um, I haven't talked, you know. Go ahead. Yeah. She was my first landlady. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. In Chilbo, cool. Yeah. That'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah. Well, thank really? you so much. I think uh, I've got like a, yeah, uh, an into, hour into and 30 it. minutes worth of film. Yeah. So I, I'm yeah. going to shut down the cool. film. And I just want to thank That's you guys great. for everything you've done. Great. And this tour has just been wonderful. So let me shut down the recording and then I can just hang out here. So bye, everybody.